How about them tops, son? All day, SEC boys. You're listening to the Red Out Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome into a Red Out short clip here. Uh, This is from our latest episode. Hope you enjoy. Without saying shit as much as you can, you want to explain the thoughts? <laughs> can I get we are ex- trying to keep a decent rating around. here. Yes, if you'd like, Ross. We're going to get ex- explicit, explicit yeah, we're gonna get on ex- iTunes. We're going to get expl- explicit content because of Ross. <laughs> okay. He's passionate. Sorry, He's um, passionate. <laughs> and I feels bad. Now you made him feel bad. Yeah, it's okay. I don't know. I was, I was just mad about a brown coat. No, yeah. Uh, so the pods, I mean, I think we've talked about it in the past, but Western qualified for the, the number one pod. That means they were seated with the top five teams after the, the regular play before bonus play. So basically, in order to get a, a bye in the uh, conference tournament, all they have to do is not finish last in that pod. So if they beat out, was it UAB, UTSA, uh, Southern, <laughs> and Old Man, if they can finish on one of those teams... Uh. Then, uh, then they get a buy. But if let's say they come in last in the pod, then they're the number five seed. You can't finish below Damn. your pod on the seed. So, like the, you know, Louisiana Tech of the world, the highest they can finish in pod two is six. So I mean, we're in good shape right now. We just have to take care of business these next three weeks. Yeah, so. he has no idea what's going on. Yeah, sorry, we're playing the Star Wars theme behind you. Man, you explain the pod get that exclusive label yeah. and copyright. Yeah, now we're going to get with a copyright. Look, yeah, Disney, we are just, this is it, this is it, guys, sorry. Yeah, Disney's going to pull. <laughs> yeah, all I can picture is uh, Mickey Mouse from South Park. Just kicking in the door. Have you seen the Mickey Mouse yes, South Park? Yes, he flies yeah. in with the bounty hunter. Oh, my gosh. Slave one. <sighs> okay, so. once Okay, so how many pods are there total? Four. Well, no, there's four games. There's three pods. Three pods, four games. Um, so how do you all feel going into our pod? Uh, Jared, Jared, why don't you take it since we're always kind of explained the oh pod. Oh, boy. All right. Whoa, so, whoa, whoa. There's so much to talk about with the guys. I, know. I mean, just to kind of recap what led us to this pod... I uh, beat Biddle on Thursday, won the 100 Miles of Hate. I was a very happy individual, although they still kept it close. I knew they would keep it close. Always do. But we still got it done, still got it done. And then there was the abomination that was the Saturday against UAB. It was just dreadful, think, dreadful, dreadful. I think dreadful. unmitigated disaster works there. Yeah. Yes, that is that is the only words to use for that. But Western shot 37% as a whole, 22% from deep that game. Uh, the only thing that was really working, and it's, this is, could be something we discussed really quick, was Charles Bassey was dominating. He's 10 to 13, 10 rebounds, and 23 points. <laughs> Uh, Devin, your guy Jared Savage saw it, a very pedestrian one of eleven from downtown. Okay, so here's here's, here's, here's my here's my question though. Seriously, why do I get called out for Jared Savage? Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> but go ahead. God, so, that was your guy. So like, okay, <laughs> when Savage is zero for five yeah. from three, yeah, the next time out, I know you can't say if you take another three. I'm going to strangle you to death with a towel. I know you can't say that, okay? Because you can't. But you can heavily imply that that's going to happen. It's like, you see that big guy down there who's dunking on fools? He's about to go make a bunch of money. So I don't know if you... If he's not going to care. Unless you want to end up in the bed next to Coach Stans, you yeah. will quit shooting the three. I mean, but seriously, like, this team's best games, I mean, honest to God, have been when they're attacking the basket, and then you get your easy baskets, you attack, you draw some draw fouls, fouls, and then that frees you up, gets you in some mojo, and that's when Jared can go off and hit like five in a row. They just, they, I just do not understand 
Why? I mean, unless your last name on your jersey says Curry, you don't need to be taking 11 threes in one game. I'm sorry. I mean, Savage has his moments where he's draining a bunch of shots. And, I mean, he's shown, like, in that overtime game against UTSA, he was doing absolutely terrible the entire 40 minutes of the regular game. But once it got into overtime, he hit those big threes, those three big threes that led to Western winning that game. So, I mean, it's just such a hard decision to make. But, I mean, I definitely agree. After, like, the fifth missed three, that's when you kind of need to tell him, like, hey, pass the ball to the guy in the middle, in the paint. You see the really tall guy right there. Yeah, you throw him the ball and you let him dunk it because that's where their bread and butter is right now. And the best part is is that they can keep fouling on Batsy, and he's an incredible free throw shooter. Yeah, Just amen. Just the big man. Feed the big man. Well, not only that, even if, let's let's say Bassey is like a bazillion, like if he's covered, you're fast and can make layups. Yeah. You can run at their center. Yeah. When you're a sm- when you're a smaller player, go inside. They will foul you, and you can make your free throws, or at least get a bunch well, of dudes in foul trouble. Go ahead, Ross. We were in the bonus for sixteen minutes. We were in the bonus for sixteen minutes left in the half, in the second half. We were down three. We were down three. We were basically all we had to do was attack the basket, and. That's what our bread and butter is. We actually won the turnover battle by six. Yep. Yeah. We were murdered on the glass. We we instead of attacking the basket and drawing fouls, we set up for those jump shots. I think this was the first game where we made Rick Stansberry for Mark. You know, having Mark Shue in there. I know we all we all gripe that Stansberry's not a great game coach, and I would be the first to agree with that. But in situations like that, the the old the old hand knows what to do when it comes to uh, you know doing that. And this loss was just a giant giant missed opportunity. Think about it. we were we were one behind Old Dominion. Now we have to we have to go four and zero. They have to go two and two for us to get the number one seed in tournament. We could have clipped number one seed in bonus play if we would have just won this game. We would have won seven or what seven straight and nine of ten. Instead, we're you know we took a giant step back and our momentum shot. And uh, the only thing I hope that this loss provides is a refocusing, saying, "Okay, we, you know, we got to keep, uh, we got to keep focusing. We got to get Tavian Hollingsworth back on track." Man. What is with his not slump? existent? I, yeah. I, that's a good question, and actually, Michael Butler kind of posted that for us on Facebook. Yeah, what so happened to Tavian up and under? Like that was. Yeah. I I have no idea. Um. And like uh, like Ross was saying, we actually had a game where they had more turnovers than we did. Yeah, right. That's, that's the crazy part of that step. Um, yeah, we but, did. Uh, one of the main issues I saw, sorry, Devin, but uh, no, like I was at the game, and I was all of us were so frustrated because they keep going too deep into the shot clock and do absolutely nothing to try to set up any type of like good play whatsoever. Like One issue that the team just kept having on offense is that they would just start passing the ball around the perimeter to just kind of hold it a little bit, and then maybe do like a pump fake, pass it to the next guy. And then there's they look up and there's like five seconds left in the shot clock. And they're like, oh shoot, we're actually supposed to do something. And then either Hollingsworth or Savage <laughs> throw up some terrible shot, and then the other team would get the rebound, run it up the court, and do something with it. But I, that's something that needs to be done. I just want to see a little more ball movement, especially like on Saturday. That was a major issue that I saw is that they weren't really getting the kind of good open looks that they usually have. And, I mean, I don't want us to be like Marshall either because they're a team that lives by the three and dies by the three. That's part of why they've underperformed so much this year is that they've had some cold games shooting. Like, as good as Elmore, Elmore and Burks, Burks are is that they were still struggling a whole lot. But that's another issue that I see. And there's one thing real quick I saw uh, Seth Greenberg talking about in reference to Indiana and Romeo Langford, uh, talking about how Indiana should be a good team. They have the superstar. But what happens is that a lot of one-and-dones have their own agenda, and then there's the rest of the team with theirs. But if there's a team like UK or something that's all one-and-dones, they have like a shared experience because they're kind of gelling as a team. They're all freshmen. They're getting used to it. But the issue with Western is that we have a potential one and done with Bassey. Obviously, he has that potential. But it seems like the other players are the ones kind of taken away from what he's doing. Like they're trying to be the hero, to say it kind of that way, like trying to make a big shot or do something like that, which is good. You want them to kind of have that attitude. But if Bassey is what's working the most, I mean, you need to get the ball to him. I know everybody wants to try to be the hero, make a big 
quick shot, but if the shots aren't falling, you need to just keep it inside. I'm like, dude, I hope that's something that they've learned. Well, that's the thing. Like, dude, if you're cold, you're cold. Yeah. Like, and you got to do stuff to heat back up. And yeah. those two things are make easy shots, like inside mm-hmm. shots, draw fouls, and hit your free throws. I mean, that's that is like basketball one oh one. Yeah. And did you do just settling back there from two foot behind the three? Just uh, contested three, contested three. Okay, fine. Then then you're going to sit. It's like like I said, you can't say you're going to strangle him, yes. but you could say you're going to run until you have diarrhea down your leg. <laughs> run until you puke is what yeah. we used to do, not yeah. not diarrhea. Um, but it's always a poop joke. I think, yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we've Jerry's little girl laugh. That was awesome. He's a tee. Well, I'll, I'll say something about, about Saturday's game, though, against Old Dominion. It is a chance to start over and make a statement. We win this game. You know, we we take the number one team in the pod. We punch them in the mouth. We are up on everybody in the league or in the pod. So you know, it's it's crucial to start off Saturday with a win if we can, because it's a golden opportunity. And I mean, we had that team. We had that team on the ropes last time we went to Norfolk. But let's let's go there, refocus, show that Saturday was just an aberration. We were tired, yada yada yada. And then let's let's go ahead and dominate this and. You know, go into the conference tournament with a lot of momentum. That's, it starts Saturday. So that's an excellent segue into the mailbag yeah. because one of the questions is, how do you beat ODU? And wasn't good. that Jack Watson? I, I think Jack say, Watson who asked you got on that one? Let yeah, see. from Twitter, I think Jack um, Watson asked that one. Um, yep. Like, how do you, first one, how do you, how do you beat o- Old Dominion? You do like you did last time, except actually hold on to the ball and actually close out a game. <laughs> yeah, my thing was absolute turnovers. Like, seriously, play what, play. Play your game and limit turnovers. Yep. Live by the three, die by the three, right? Be physical. <laughs> be physical. Abuse be stifle. physical to you. Yes. Uh, and the good thing about compared to last time, uh, we're gonna have we're gonna have beer in the entire game. I think the last time we played them was when Stansbury still had beer in the doghouse and he did some of the play and and Benton and Bassy were turnover machines. Beer and I think you know, if you include Saturday's game, I think he had five assists and two turnovers. I think yeah. he's got like sixty assists to like ten turnovers in the last eight games. I mean, he is he is the he is what drove the the streak for Saturday. And I think that's gonna help us a lot against Old Dominion. I agree. Completely agree. Um, that comes from Jack Watson. Thanks, Jack, for all the questions, buddy. Uh, Michael Butler on Facebook says, When when will the Hollinsworth slump end? You get out of your head, bud. That's all I can say. When he attacks the basket like he did last year. Yes. Uh, attack, you know, don't sweat. I miss the basket. Just because a lot of people get in their heads about miss, miss, ba- miss attempts, miss baskets. Just play. Hollingsworth's best games last year. Hey, Jared, did he did he try the, any of those step backs like where he drives to the lane? And, you know, he, he was dominating those earlier in the season. Did he do any yeah, of those? Yeah, he hasn't done much of that this year, which is kind of baffling. I mean, like he's been one of the people that would get really late into the shot clock and then throw up some terrible shot. Like there's this one air ball he had on Saturday that was pretty – Head scratch worthy, but I mean, he he definitely needs to attack the rim more for sure. I feel like him and his mid range shot is really good. He needs to utilize that more. I'm wondering if they have a pass rule. You have to pass so many times before you can take a shot. Like Hoosiers, you have to pass it at least four times. <laughs> exactly, and that is the most frustrating thing for me ever. Um, now his his the like I just I sincerely I mean t- Hollingsworth is still my my favorite player. He's my favorite player last year. Um, I miss the I'm gonna go up for a layup, some crazy like <laughs> off balance English off the glass like o- Oklahoma State style like performance, and he just hasn't done it this year. And I just he has to attack the glass. He just uh, has to attack the basket. I was looking at his stats, and basically he's playing about the same minutes a game. You know, same shot, same everything. He's averaging a little bit more points, but he's just way more inefficient this year. I mean, I guess that's. Western season to a team, but Glass sure shot it out like 39, 40% from the field, and this year he's kind of like 33%, something like that. And I mean, he just has to be more, he has he can't be a volume shooter. Yeah. He needs to be efficient. When he's efficient is when, when he does well. I mean, same with Josh Anderson, same with Jared Savage. Let the game come to you. If it's not your shooting night, get your teammates involved. Let's, you know, Let's play within ourselves, and that's how we get to that point. That's how you get Bassie up and looks. That's how you get 
you know, Omer threes and, you know, Savage threes and Bearden just driving to the baskets. Let's, let's play team basketball and for shots. Well, yeah, we, we I'm just glad that Anderson has finally showed up and playing at the potential that I thought he would. Because if we didn't have all the points that he's been dropping in the past couple of months, we probably wouldn't even be in the top pod. We'd probably be stuck somewhere in the middle of the second one. But Anderson's been killing it recently, so shout out to him. And and Jared, do you want to do you want to sh- player? Do you want to shout out yourself for that prediction? <laughs> Pat yourself on the back a little bit. Your, your well, early season he, hot if take. he would have gotten it together at the early part of the year, I think he would be leading us some points. But I mean, what can you do? This it's just been like it's like what Ross said. It's just been underperforming year. Uh, shout out Elmas, Miguel's, uh, Lost Paulus, some of those other. Don't hate on my shout outs. <laughs> <laughs> you come to Franklin, Kentucky, and you come to El Potrero, and then you'll understand why. That that'll sound good. I'll have to try that sometime. Um, I know Brett. Uh, Brett Comas Jr. is a huge fan of the show. Appreciate you listening, buddy. Um, shout out to you. Um, and I know he loves this idea because I've heard he's commented on some of my stuff saying this. Um, why are we not using the full team, even for a few minutes? Let the fresh legs run. We have more talent than we let on the court. He is a gr- he is a pro platoon person as am I. <laughs> um, now I don't think we should do a five five switch. Right. No, but on. I think we could do a three three switch. I think we could keep yeah. Bassie Bearden on the court and do three in, three out. I don't see what the problem would be there. You I know, think it depends on who Jake I mean, Homer's matched up with. Yeah. More minutes. I mean, I'd like to see Gambrell get a couple more minutes. Dude, I mean, for real. He came back for like three games and hasn't. he's been MIA ever since. Yeah, that is as hyped as that kid was, I don't know why he's not seeing. I mean, he's supposed to be a good shooter. He's very fast. Like, I mean, I know he was injured earlier in the year, but that should be well past heel unless he re-aggravated it. So I, I'm with you, dude. I would love to see Gambrell get some more, so get some more minutes. Um, and I think that's been a problem with us not blowing out people. I mean, we can't. You know, the one game we blew out somebody was that Charlotte game, like a month and a half. Yeah, them and UTEP. We haven't blown anybody else out where the freshmen get a chance to to really get some quality minutes. Unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, there has to be some sort of team mixture where you could triage the damage. Like, you know, now I'm not saying behind five you can put these dudes in, but, you know, for a minute and a half, there's got to be a scheme and a a set of dudes who could at least be five bodies and a foul. You know what I'm saying? Like, to give a a rest. I think that that has to be doable. Now, how doable is it for the rest of the way? Now that, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Um, how is Monty? Good, good, I guess. He's, he's <laughs> I, heard, I heard it was a stinger. It's a stinger. Okay, so he's good. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen one. Uh, one. Stingers are, um, for those of you who don't know the technicality of a stinger, a stinger is where your head and neck and shoulder are separated at a very fast rate, and so the nerve right there is kind of plucked like a guitar string, and so it sends a shock into your neck. There's a lot of uh, worries about neck injuries around that point, so that's why people try to hold stingers in higher regard as far as neck injuries go. Um, so that's why those are a little taken more seriously, but he should be fine. Ne- uh, stingers aren't that big a deal. I've got to explain because I, got a, it's got I have a no week, clue. got a week to prepare for that. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He do it. dirt on it. It's comfortable. Listen, so what do you do? Do you just like ice and like isolate it? Like don't move it? Back? Ice and Motrin, you know, let it ice work and itself Motrin. out. Yeah, that's, I swear, that was my boss's <laughs> favorite it was almost his motto. Hey, man, They'd be yeah. like, hey, I've sprained my ankle. Ice and Motrin. If Doc said it, yeah, right. You know, sprained your, you know, dislocated my elbow. Ice and Motrin. My leg is dangling off, and I think a dog is chewing on it. That'd ice and fine. Motrin. That's fine. Throw it in the cooler. You'd be yeah. all right. Uh, did Nelson have back surgery? Dude, I haven't heard anything about his back. Uh, and that's weird. I don't I don't like when they do that kind of stuff, but let's see. Yeah, I mean, they're kind of hush-hush just because Yeah, I haven't heard anything I'm telling you guys, I honestly think it was a, oh, he's, he, like maybe he has some back issues, but I'm I'm not sure it wasn't an I right, do drought. Like I have no idea. Like if he transfers in the off season, yeah. I would not be surprised at all. Uh, from, I would have zero shock. From what I've heard, Kathy Grimes, uh, she's asking it. it is he even on the bench with the team anymore? I haven't noticed. Yeah, he is. He was there on Saturday, and I think there's mm-hmm. too. He's just not dressed. I was okay, gonna say so somebody good. says he's in street clothes, so. There you um, go. There we go. Um, so that's the mailbag. Uh, so get your. Oh, yeah, Jared. 
favorite WK cold take of the week? <laughs> yes. Yeah. What is yes. it, Jared? Jared, do you want to? Do you need time to prepare? Or? Uh, give me like five seconds. Okay. Do we just need to count that down? Yes. So let's just sit here. That? I actually. All right. I actually got it. Oh well, uh, that wasn't even five seconds, Jared. <laughs> Gosh. Actually, it was like an actual five seconds. Was it really? <laughs> time goes slowly for time. me. All right, uh, let me see, let me see. Oh, this was good. Three days ago, there was a guy that said, like, we were talking about how she was taking uh, Stansberry's spot. He said, quote, don't get mad at me, but I am the only one who's suspicious of Stansberry's absence and suspects he may be pulling an urban mire, whatever that is supposed to mean. Uh, Uh, Like, are you talking about, like, covering up, like, an assault? You stole my take on that. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, how... Seriously, some people, man... I don't know. I, I, do, I, do, I do not think he's pulling an Urban Myers. I don't think he's looking for another job. I don't think... Or, or yeah, or the, the fake injury in another job. Yeah. yeah, I don't... I don't. I mean, unless you see him with it on a vacation somewhere, I just shake... Man. Shaking my head, guys. I have no idea. Like, you know, I talked about those fans. Yes. That's a take from one of those fans. Yes. <laughs> So please, it's content. Keep it up, but just know. Hope you enjoyed the clip from our latest episode. Subscribe for our weekly Red Out podcast. And always remember, go Tops.